what does airflow look like inside of a typical server? So the, the cover comes off, and you can see pretty much what goes on here. There, for this particular server, not all servers look like this, but this is very common today. You've got four disk drives right at the front. This is the front, this is the back. So you've got one, two, three, four, and what you can't see is they're actually stacked three deep in the, on this particular server. So you've got 12 disk drives all lined up, and believe it or not, the air has to go through them. This is like a firewall right there. You can, good luck in trying to find an opening. They're there. Not very much, but they're there. So how do you get the air moving? One, two, three, four hefty little fans. I've looked at the fan curves of those fans. They're impressive. Some of these fans, not particularly these fans, these are going at about 20,000 RPM at full bore when, when they're going full speed. It, you probably just hear a little whine, but uh, if you could amplify that to a large scale, that's a very sophisticated little fan. That drives the whole process, which then pushes the air. This is like another firewall. The only thing that goes through it, you can see the cabling here, some wires, there's a couple of openings. Of course, there's an opening right for the fan to blow the air through it. So once it goes through there, this is the processor, and it's actually covered with a kind of a partial box. What's inside is a big set of fins with a little refrigerant coil. The refrigerant that's, that is a cold plate against the processor boils away, goes into the fins, Evap uh, condenses and drops back down and the cycle continues as this supposedly cool air passes over the processor. Then it goes over the memory and it goes out the back. And by the way, it's a dual processing unit, so this is the exact same with the only difference that memory and the processor are reversed. But there's, there's got a significant little path to go through there. And you've got other components like a power supply. There's a lot of design issues that have to go in there, but how does it really work? <laughs> so uh, here's very diagrammatically, you can see the drives with limited airflow, the fans, the processor, memory board. What you don't see here are the fins with a refrigerant loop. By the way, your laptop very likely has a little refrigerant loop that goes to probably to the bottom, and there's a plate. The refrigerant goes over there, it condenses, and it gets pumped back, not pumped, but it just migrates back to the processor. So even little, little laptops, for the most part, have this level of liquid cooling right at the processor level, but the heat has to go out through those fins that sit right on top. So hot air comes off the processor. Some hot air comes um, off the memory boards. The power supply often has its own little fan. Heat comes out through here. So you've got cold air coming in here, gets pushed through here, mixes with the cool air, hot, sorry, hot air, cold air, kind of mix, and it comes out at some temperature. That temperature outlet, the, the outlet temperature is not a fixed condition. It doesn't control to maintain a constant out, uh, temperature out. The processor has its own little um, algorithm that controls the speed of the fan. It does what it does. I don't want to mess with it. The only thing I need to worry about is that temperature right there. If I deliver this, it doesn't matter how much heat builds up to all the other components, and I, I show it kind of linearly, but it's not really linear. As you can imagine, the airflow moves around inside that box and it passes over other components. If it's already 100 degrees, by the time it goes past the first processor and goes over the memory, I don't care. The, the box has been designed for that. So you take that, that uh, box and put it in the cabinet. So now, with its own little airflow, which now I've migrated into a stacked up cabinet, everything is perfect. Here's my temperature in at the supplier temperature, and here's kind of the average of all of the outs because they may all be different. And uh, as you can see, I've got good airflow here, but that's not really what happens in most boxes. It's not what really happens in most cabinets. So inside this box, you've got a lot of inefficiencies. How many people have not seen these little pass-throughs here? Okay, or how about gaps between the cabinet and the floor? Maybe there's a set of wheels. I doubt that most data centers actually have any kind of blanking panel right there. So in the real world, you've got your temperature in, and for the most part, most of the air goes through like a perforated plate, and if everything is perfect, ideal, air at the same temperature would go into the servers, but you've got 
kind of recirculation here, you may have recirculation here, you even have recirculation coming under the floor sometimes, or what you can't see in two dimensions is the recirculation between cabinets. So when you get this hot air it comes up here, it kind of pollutes this cool air, and usually the higher you get, the more of that hot stuff gets up into the top of the cabinet. So you may have this temperature down here that is probably pretty close to the supplier temperature from the air handler, and this is probably considerably higher. In most, in most cabinets, it's imperfect airflow. And I show gaps between the servers you know, a, as they stack, but quite often there's also gaps between the rails within the server. Most, a lot of cabinets don't even have side panels. So you mount the servers uh, on some rail or rack and you can see gap, you can see daylight all the way through. There's a lot of internal recirculation. Whoops. It's very likely that that air comes back along the sides and it messes up my perfect condition. Darn it, I hate imperfect conditions. 